hello, 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 I bring you a message from beyond the grave. <laughs> this is the ghost of Ben Jones, who died aged 34. I came to Antarctica to study albatross behavior, but a terrible fate befell me. Ah, monkey nuts. Great, never had any of these. Uh, hello, yes. A bit spooky in here, isn't it? Uh, it's me, Ben. Uh, very much alive and well. At least, uh, I presume I am. Unless, of course, the afterlife looks exactly like the inside of a food storage container. It's never been portrayed like that in a film, has it? Not to my knowledge, certainly. Uh, well, yes, I'm in the food store at present, and to uh, officialise proceedings, as it were, um, this is the sixth of my diary entries uh, to date. I'm oh, sorry, officialise. Not really a word. Don't look it up. No, I got it from... Uh, well, Graham's got this book of Bushisms. Oh, not as in um, vagina monologues. Uh, no, as in George W. Uh, we keep it in the loo. Yes, so Graham, he's the winter base commander here. Well, he's, he's very liberal, whereas I tend to stay out of all that. I mean, well, if I had to define myself politically, I suppose I'm fairly straight down the middle. Left of right and right of left. As I always say, without the left wing and the right wing, an albatross will never fly. It's all about balance and wind velocity. Um, that last bit makes less sense when applied to politics, but uh, you catch my drift. No. I knew from quite a young age that ornithology was for me. Oh, ah, human life. Must be Graham. Hello. Ha, all right, heard you the first time. Sorry? Uh, no, just because of the echo. I said, heard you the first time. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, what's the situation? It's not great. I uh, found these nuts. Yeah, is that it? A uh, couple of unmarked tins. Uh, could be anything. Yes, that's it. I'm afraid. Bloody great. No food. It's not ideal. Well, it's not going to keep us going, is it? Mm, I think you're getting a bit hungry. What? Uh, it's when you get too hungry and it makes you become angry. Mm. And I just combine the words. All right, again. Yeah. Thank you. Do you care for a nut? No, don't want a bloody Brazil nut, thank you. Well, monkey nut. Is it fine? Whatever, all nuts look the same to me, so... <laughs> really? Well, uh, good job you're not a psychiatrist. <laughs> not now, babe. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot you were hungry. Still, there's no sign of the uh, food delivery, then? No. Hmm. Oh, dear. I'm really stuck with that, aren't we? Um, I'll, I'll try radio control again. Yeah, do. Main base? Come in, main base. Are you receiving me? Over. Main base, this is unit base, Bird Island. Do you receive me? Over. Come in, main base. No. no still nothing. Gotcha, little bugger. Rats. Big problem for us, I'm afraid. We've had to lay all these traps down in the albatross colony. Humane ones, obviously. Uh, just trying to deter them from stealing the bird eggs. Come on, Ben, you. And then we simply release them outside the colony. Oh, he's a lively one, isn't he? <laughs> Still no word from main base about the food situation, I'm afraid. I wonder how rat tastes. Oh, <laughs> he obviously heard me. I was only joking. <laughs> Come on, then, fella. Yes, I think I'm going to give you a name. Uh, John Snow. <laughs> Sir David Frost. Christerberg. Ooh. Oh, that's weird. I caught a distinct whiff of banana then. Must have been an olfactory hallucination because of the hunger. <laughs> oh well. Main base, this is Unit Base, Bird Island. Do you receive me? Over. No, still nothing. <sighs> yes, I started this last night. Uh, as you can imagine, a good book is an absolute necessity in a place like this. It really can bring solace to the mind on a bleak day like today. Providing immeasurable comfort, actually. Yes, this one is about a girl 
who inherits a set of doorknobs from her uncle. And that's as far as I've got at the moment. Um, I can't imagine where the author is going to take me next, to be honest. Yes, I had the foresight to purchase an assortment of paperbacks from a charity shop before setting off. Uh, luckily enough, there's a very handy Sue Rider just round the corner. They've got a wonderful book section. I'm quite a frequent visitor, actually. You know, I got a plain tie from there once and some uh, slightly chipped crockery. In fact, a friend came round recently for a cup of tea. I said, uh, would you like it in the mug or the Sue Rider cup? <laughs> Didn't even raise a smile. Pearls before swines. Oh, look. Inscription in the front says, property of Angela Swain, aged 52. She's 52? Oh, uh, hi, Angela Swain. Uh, mind you, that, that was in 1972, so uh, mm -hmm. she could well be dead now. <laughs> Ah. Any luck? Uh, no, they're still not responding, and I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little worried. Mm -hmm. What about oats? What about oats? You're suggesting I go outside and sacrifice my life for yours? Yeah, not, not Captain Oats. Oh. We could make porridge with water if we get desperate. Well, yeah, we could. Well, the only other thing I can suggest is that one of us goes out to catch fish. Yeah, but, but that would be a direct violation of the rules of the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources Board, plus the weather's not great. I, I realise that, Ben. Uh, I'm not taking this decision lightly. But oh, no. I do think that the circumstances are extremely extenuating. I, I don't think the board would want us to starve. Yeah, well, I hope you're prepared to say that in a court of law, because I want it known on record now that I, I was perfectly prepared to suck it up and eat porridge rather than actually do porridge. All right. Look... I'm not talking about annihilating the seabed floor. It's just a few fish. Mm, I suppose it could be a while, couldn't yeah. it? Yeah. And as you say, circumstances are extremely extenuating. I think one of us should stay here in case main base get in touch. Yes, so who's going to do what? Do you want to toss for it? Do you mean like a kind? Well, yes, obviously. Yeah, good. Oh, no, I was just checking. That's just great, isn't it? If things weren't bad enough, my blood sugar's low. I've been forced to partake in an illegal activity. Miles of nothingness surround me, and yet somehow I managed to step in penguin poo. Bloody brilliant. Ugh. Great. Number six. The worst kind to get off. Yeah, I, I should explain. Uh, the faeces of the penguin changes in colour and consistency depending on its current diet. So we've got a chart up in the station, you see, and this is definitely a number six. <sighs> oh. Did you hear that? Stomach rumble. I feel weak. I mean, this is just, well, it, it, it's insufferable. And apart from anything else, I'd specifically put in a special order this month for more batteries for this dictaphone. Oh, God, if the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources Board could see me now, I'd be disgraced. Oh, no, I've just remembered. I met Dame Ellen MacArthur at a barbecue last year. We chatted for at least 20 minutes. She's on the board. She's bound to remember me. Oh, it's a shame. Really hit it off as well. I bought her book, based on the success of the interaction. Well, it was in the Sue Ryder shop, so it just seemed like fate. You know, the diary of her sailing single-handedly around the world. It was great, actually, if not a little samey. At least Dame Ellen had snack bars. I actually think I'm going to faint. And then what would happen? I'd lay here on the brink of death before a gentoo came and pooed on me whilst Graham sits in the warm, skyping his wife, most probably. Oh, well, perhaps not. There's Graham now. What's he doing? Graham! Graham! Do you have any news? Graham, couldn't you hear? Eh, hey, ciao, amico mio. <gasps> the food has arrived. We have food. High fives all round. Uh, figuratively speaking, we've feasted like kings. Graham's on a sugar high. Uh, that's Delangelo that you can hear in the background. Main base sent him over on foot with the food box to keep us going for another few days before the shipment comes in. Um, 
He seems like a jolly nice chap, actually. His English is limited, but, uh, well, as his name would suggest, he really has been somewhat of a guardian angel. Uh, as you can probably hear, uh, spirits are high. And uh, when I say spirits, I must confess we've all had a drink. <laughs> Some more than others. Uh, D'Angelo, he makes his own, apparently. Hmm. Uh, and it sort of tastes like a mixture between petrol and something approaching rum. Uh, and it's the colour of probably number four on the, uh, the penguin poo chart. <laughs> He's been singing for about half an hour now. What about I could not tell you? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Dlandino. Yes, what? Salute. Ah, yes. Salute. Yes, salute. Salute. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, don't touch that. It's a dictaphone. <laughs> yes, yes, I was just saying. Yes, uh, what? I was recording my diary. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I was just saying you brought us supplies. <laughs> supplies. Supplies, supplies! <laughs> yes. uh, no, to be fair to him, that was, that was quite funny. Yeah. Mm, no, no, really, D'Angelo, I must um, insist you don't fiddle with that. It's a very expensive digital voice record. No, it's not a toy, D'Angelo. No, he's had a lot to drink. I don't want him fiddling. He's not, well, I'd rather not take the chance. No, D'Angelo, give it... That is a walk around 2000. It's top of the rate. Give it... Stai facendo bella figura! Oh! Oh god! Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you alright, D'Angelo? Are you okay? God, I heard a crack. Me too. Um, D'Angelo? Are you okay? Oh, partigiano! Portami via! Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao! Well, that would explain what the crack was. What? He landed on the monkey nuts. Oh. What was that? What was what? That. I thought, I thought I saw something fall out of your pocket. It went, it went under the table. Did it? Yeah. Why can I smell banana? <laughs> oh, great. Is this a joke? Ben. What? It fall out of your pocket. I see. Oh, I see. Your English is suddenly improved. Ben, I can't believe you had a secret banana. <sighs> no, I didn't know it was there. I've got so many pockets on these trousers. Look, big flappy pockets. Big. Flappy pocket. Yes, thank you. Andy. All this time, you had a secret banana in your pocket. No, I really didn't. I mean, I would have eaten it, wouldn't I? I just, must have popped it in there a while I don't ago. Believe you. How could you not notice a banana in your pocket? I thought I was just pleased to see myself. Good night. Night. You put uh, Pavarotti to bed as well. Yeah, I will do. Bird Island was written by Katie Wicks. Ben was played by Reese Shearsmith. Graham by Julian Rind Tutt. D'Angelo by Jot Davies. The producer was Talusha Galani.